Hello everyone, how are you today? Today we're going to look at AMSs. So we start with the definition and the characteristics of AMSs. What is an AMS? And before I move on to defining, remember this is grade 11 geo. And I hope you're going to find this beneficial for you. Now what are AMSs? An AMS is a large volume of air with similar characteristics similar characteristics in terms of temperature atmospheric pressure are the three main characteristics of AMSs. They tend to have similar characteristics with the same temperature, the atmospheric pressure, as well as humidity levels. So we have four main, four main types of AMSs. What are these four main types of AMSs? One, we have what is known as the equatorial MS. And what you, where do you think this MS develops from? The equatorial MS, as the name suggests, it covers the equatorial oceans. And in terms of its characteristics, it is usually moist, usually warm and moist. Number two, we've got the tropical MSs. Where do these tropical MSs develop? The tropical MS. The tropical MSs, these ones, they develop within the areas of the Tropic of Cancer. And Tropic of Capricorn. So they occur okay within the tropics. And these ones are usually um, they are usually dry and stable air masses. Number three, we have the polar air mass. Polar air mass occurs 50 degrees to 60 degrees north or south of the equator. And in terms of characteristics, these ones are cool and unstable. And then lastly, we have the Arctic and Antarctic AMS. These ones, they occur at the poles. You should know that they occur at the poles. So we are cold and stable. These are the four main types of MSs that we have. And whenever we have two AMSs with the different characteristics meeting, that's when we tend to have what we call a front, which tends to separate these two AMSs. For example, at the polar AMS, you should know that's where we tend to have the polar front. Because we have two different AMSs meeting. Right, if you have questions on AMSs, you let me know. We are going to move on to the monsoon winds. 
and I hope you took notes is I was right here. We go to Musu means. Right, so we start. What are monsoonal winds? Monsoon winds. These, in terms of the definition, these are seasonal winds. That occur, these are seasonal winds, or they can also be known also as reversal winds that occur within the tropics. And whenever we look at monsoonal winds, we always give an example of India. Whenever we look at these monsoonal winds, we always give an example of India. Looking at the Siberian Plateau and what happens to those winds within the Siberian Plateau. So this is India, the Siberian Plateau. And I'm also going to also draw it also the side. On the summer side because i actually explain what happens to those winds in the different seasons so that you can see how the winds tend to change from winter to summer now the summer season sorry i'm going to start with the winter season the winter season is the one that usually occurs between these ones that occur between april may This is their winter. We remember why? Because the Indi India is in the northern hemi. Um, it's in the northern hemisphere, isn't it? And then when we look at the summer, when would be the summer season there? These ones will occur during June to um, June to September. Now, what happens to these winds in winter? In winter, the Siberian Plateau, which is inland, is very, very cold. And because it is very, very cold, here we are experiencing cold conditions now. And because we are experiencing cold conditions, it means air descends from the plateau going down, isn't it? So it means we have an area of high pressure there because winds are cold. So it means that, and before, it also means that the surrounding sea is also warm. So it creates a low pressure system. So winds move from the Siberian to, remember winds move from high pressure to low pressure. So winds, they move They move from the high pressure, which is the plateau, to the low pressure, where is there, where we have the sea. And when we have high pressure system in that, what does it mean? It means no condensation will take place. No condensation, no rain. So what are we going to experience here? We will experience dry conditions within this season. And remember, this is also part of your paragraphing questions on what would be the impacts of these winds in winter. Now in summer, what happens now? In summer, it is the Siberia because the inland, inland, it is the heat, the continent is being heated continuously. So we are going to experience heat here within the inland part, and this will create a low pressure system. 
and the surrounding sea is cooler than inland so it creates a high pressure system isn't it remember air moves from high pressure to low pressure remember a moves from high pressure to low pressure so air from the sea moves inland it is heated and then it rises hence creating the low pressure system from the high pressure to the inland which is inland it is heated and then it rises you should know that with a high low pressure system it is associated with heating and rising of a and when we have a rising you know we have condensation taking place condensation takes place we will experience so they will experience high rainfall And in most cases, this high rainfall is usually associated, it's a lot of rain, it is usually associated with a lot of flooding within this particular season. Now what would be the impacts of the summer and the winter? We know with the impacts of the summer, summer can be an advantage in that you can grow crops like rice. Those ones, they need a lot of water, that's why there's a lot of rice farming there in India. But then we should also know the disadvantage there. You must look at it in both the positive and the negative. Ne? When you look, when you have to analyze your paragraphic questions, with the positive, it will encourage rice farming, especially of rice. But here on the negative now, um, you can have crops being destroyed. There are some crops that can be destroyed by. The flooding more rains can also mean that we have more water for hydroelectric power isn't it more farming of rice also means that we have food also so those are some of the things you have to analyze when you are looking at the neg the positives and the negatives of these monsoonal winds so all in all if you see there is a reversal in terms of the movement of winds from one season to another. The way the winds move in winter is the reversal of how the winds move in summer. Right, this is the end of the lesson we have for two, for um, Monsuno winds. I hope you enjoyed yourself and you'll catch me in the next video. The next video is going to be about Monsuno winds. Okay, bye and have a good day.